Ramachado's whole life would be different He'd have a bigger house and he'd have more surfboards He'd have a cooler van, it wouldn't be old Rob can't afford a new van Cause Kelly took all the world titles Can we help Rob get a new van? He doesn't have any money cause Kelly took it all he Took it all for himself All because of that damn high five Rob was coming out of that barrel And Rob was like, I'm gonna win the world title But Kelly was like, <laughs> Oh, check this out, look at my hand just hanging out here Where I was like, oh, I should kick out, but oh, Damn, I wanna slap that hand It's so nice and creamy, his hand is so tan Kelly knew Rob couldn't say no to a nice little high five But Kelly knew the whole time it would change their whole lives <laughs> Yeah, then we high fived Holy. Dude. Why are you wearing black? I'm mourning. What happened? Me and Kelly started this new company mm. called Slater Juice. You did? Yeah. What does it sell? So in Hawaii, me, Kelly, and Laird, we all live at Pipeline. Okay. Like I live in the middle, Kelly lives to the left, and Laird lives to the right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. In different houses. In different houses. Because oh. we can't get along if we sit Oh, uh, you guys tried to room before? Too much hair. Oh. Kelly's like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't tell Laird. I'm like, Kelly, we have to stop Laird in this creamer. It's it's everywhere. I know. I'm sick of it. So I'm like, what if we started Slater juice? <laughs> and Kelly stared at me and he grabbed my face. He's like, you're a genius. Yeah. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> so he's like, I'm going to have you join my marketing team. Oh. And they live in his basement. His, his crew? <laughs> yeah. So in his basement, there's seven like red cameras. Oh, nice. And like Kelly stands in the middle. And Kelly's like, I got a new look. Yeah. And everyone's like, whoa, what is it? And then he'll stare at you. Like, <laughs> <laughs> We're like, there's Get seven it. guys. <laughs> and then y'all, I've also seen he sometimes closes his eyes. Oh, when he closes his eyes, I have to like get out of the basement. Oh, it's, it's like too powerful. <laughs> 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 yeah, he always does this. Like one time, I like just, sh I just shat myself. I was like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's too powerful. Kelly doesn't even move. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, what? So why are you in mourning? <laughs> <laughs> we were making the formulas for the Slater juice, and he's like, "I want my pee in that." I'm I like, don't care. That's you can't not legal. Put pee, your pee. He's like, he's like, I have so much testosterone. Like one sip of my pee will like change everyone's life. So he got it like FDA approved. Well, no, it's not FDA approved. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, we have to get it approved. I was like you can't just pee. And he's like, so he, he started peeing on me. <laughs> 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 Sorry. Okay. Yeah. And he was right. My muscles were bulging. Oh. And I ripped my ear like, ah. Oh, it's, that's the secret. <laughs> yeah, and Slater I, I, juice. I, <laughs> <laughs> Do you think he can get it passed because he's homies with that new president guy now? Right. That's why Robert F. Kennedy was there. So he was there to get it approved. The, get Slater. the Slater juice approved. Oh. <laughs> Dude, this is crazy behind the scenes so, stuff. <laughs> so long story long. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly kicked me off the team because why <laughs> oh you got too powerful yeah so Kelly kicked me off and I like just tried to pretend this didn't happen oh and Laird was coming over and he's like you're acting different I was like no I got and I was like staring at Laird come no I'm like no I'm good. Good. he's like what's that <gasps> smell oh like, he is knows that Slater juice he knows Kelly's scent he knew dude and I was like Laird I'm sorry and Laird showed me the scar and he's like I already tried to start it with him 27 years ago. <laughs> so Laird tried to start Creamer with Kelly? He tried to start Slater Juice 20 years earlier, and he's oh. like, it's too gnarly. Oh, it's too crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so now you're off the team, and that's why you're wearing black. Yeah, I'm sad. So Kelly's mad at you. Kelly's mad at me again. <laughs> <laughs>
Hey there, thrill seekers and wave chasers. This segment is brought to you by our awesome sponsor, Esteem, the ultimate destination for radical surfwear. So follow them on Instagram at Esteem Surf Co. and get some radical surfwear at esteemsurf.com. All right. What do we got here, Sterling? What is this? What? Did they start a boy band? How did I never see this? Look at that. Laird started a band with Andy and Bruce Irons. Yes. What are they called? Laird and the Creamers. Laird and the Cream <laughs> Brothers. <laughs> Dang, this sounds hot. Laird holding a, a three fin shortboard. Is this AI? I've never <laughs> seen Laird on a board like that. Does Dude. he have a does he have straps at least? It looks like a like you could win a <laughs> you could win a vacay with them or something. Why are they standing so close? <laughs> <laughs> Can you spread them out? Dolphins what? have bromances? In which two males pair up for as long as 15 years and help each other hook up with females. Dude, dolphins got each other's backs. Is this real? They got their blowholes. Dude, I got your blowholes back. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew dolphins are so sick? Dude, that sounds like the best time ever. Like you're a dolphin. You don't have to worry about going to hell because you're not a human. <laughs> Like, dude, we can have as much premarital sex as we want because we're dolphins. <laughs> I never thought about that. Like oh. us humans, we have to worry about that. But then they're like, it doesn't matter. We get free will, but they don't get to do whatever Let's they want. Let's cruise around for 15 years and bang all the chicks. <laughs> the dolphin chicks. Dolphins don't have to go to hell. But when, but, but when the year, like the 15th year, where they're like, you know what? Yeah. Let's do something else. Let's settle down. With <laughs> I might start a family, dude. <laughs> dude, that's better than mine. We can't do it. Let's pretend we're bromancing. Okay. <laughs> Whoa. Damn. See, this is when you can film yourself surf skate. That's sick. The one exception. If you're going to surf skate, Get freaking gnarly, dude. A big freaking... Dude. But look what he's grabbing onto. <gasps> what? The whole time. Her teats? Yes, that's not right in this day and age. He's like, I'm going to need to hold on to these. All right, let me uh, just grab your breasticles. You know what? <laughs> Get out of here. It's, too, it's not safe. Get out of here. <laughs> I think that's the Harvey Weinstein of the surf culture. <laughs> Is that his name Harvey? Yeah. What the name? Like Harvey? I wouldn't trust any Harvey. Harvey? Hi, I'm Harvey. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Who's this? <gasps> Dude. They went for the double iron lotus. They went for the shashing. They went for the shashami double iron lotus. Dude. Kink. It's called the. Oh, the so I know that. <laughs> oh, did he hit his face? Look. Oh, my. Oh, he punched he it. He blocked it with his hand. <sighs> so, is this in this situation as a surfer? They aren't paying attention. Well, I think they're both just like really competitive. No, I'm and they both this. want it. Well, the guy on the left, he he was in there for a while already. Look, Let's see. The goofy footer, he's already in there. Look. Oh, yeah. See? And when you're surfing that fast and that aggressive, like you can't think everything out. Right. It happens so quick. Because you're react Like when you're surfing, it's all reaction. Well, like, you know, in football, it's so illegal. This is a mistake. In football, it's like a, it's illegal to lead with your head, like helmet to helmet. Mm. But those moments are like, Beep. dude, I feel like for the world title, they well, should do this. Like see who joust. Can... <laughs> <laughs> dude, yeah, there should be some sort of jousting. There should be jousting for the world title. Like, dude. Kelly and Andy, <laughs> <laughs> who will live? <laughs> dun, 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 dude. Come on, boys. Look at their little leg. <laughs> <laughs> and how do they get a couple guys like, hey, do you want to race these giant wheels? Well, it's either that or work in the factories all day. How do they have time to do this? Shouldn't they be in the coal mine? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Now we're doing this kind of crap. Come on, girls. And hi, front side slash floater. <laughs> Backside wind spin and <laughs> Gosh, pearl that, dive. Would that make you dizzy? It's called sling. Sling. That looks fun as crap. Dude. Oh, dude. I want one of these in my bedroom. Do you think Laird and Gabby have this? Oh, yeah. Laird's like, do you want a sling tonight? <laughs> <laughs> Laird's strapped in at night. <laughs> so we can wake up an instant workout. He's like, we have to work out in our sleep. <gasps> he would need cream. <laughs> oh, dude. So people who don't surf. Yeah, this is it. This is called pearl diving. They call it purling. This is classic welcome to the surf. 
league. Yeah. Like, okay, everything's good. We <laughs> call that water. You do scorpion, and then the board flies up, and then it hits you in the head, and then you never go back. You never serve again. Every person I've seen nosedive to board hitting them. The They're head. done. Yeah. Oh. Whoa. It's Ben. He's back. It's the Ben the foil boiter. He's got the scooter foil in Antarctica. Oh. Look at the angles. How they. Whoa. This is intense. <laughs> Hold on, Ben. I'm Whoa. coming home. <laughs> you think when he flies all the way to Antarctica and he's like, damn, I gotta freaking turn <laughs> gotta, it on right now. I gotta now, get dude. on my scooter. <laughs> he would have to be doing some grunts. <laughs> no, <laughs> like there's some grunts happening. You know, there's sure. one <laughs> time it slips through it. He's like, <laughs> yeah, this guy's seen our videos and he's like, crap, I did the Sterling noise. <laughs> so he's probably bouncing. He's like. <laughs> And then he's like, <laughs> I want to try it though because it looks like something in my level. Dude, Ben, freaking hook us up with some scooter foils and ben. we'll freaking bounce everywhere. We'll bounce with you in spirit. <sighs> Look at Gabby. Oh no. This she... is Gabby coming home. Laird made her a dinner. <laughs> he <laughs> rings the triangle. Yeah. Ding, 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 ding. Dinner's, Dinner's ready. Coming home. There better be freaking some Laird bars left. Dang, look at her <laughs> buttocks. <laughs> Spirulina. <laughs> How are her <laughs> bones still in her body? Dude, could you imagine you're like sitting in the lineup and that chick battles oh, up to you? I would. Coming at you like that? <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. It's is this the. Oh, wait, is this how the WSL guy got fired? <laughs> This is, <laughs> what's his name, Logan or something? Dude, this is Eric Logan. This is Eric Logan. This is how they, they <laughs> caught him. No. <laughs> Dude, he tried to get this going, didn't he? Wait, did you see Griffin? What's Griffin in there? He's that guy with the denim jeans on. <laughs> <laughs> well, they see? wanted to make the tour all <laughs> in inclusive, so like. Oh. Dude, they got Calipinto in there. That's Italo. There's Gabriel. <laughs> Poor Eric Logan. I haven't I haven't heard or seen anything from him. He's working for someone else. Why don't we uh why don't we do this together? Why don't you stand up right there and uh Yeah, well, that's nice. Good, good stance. <laughs> good stance. Double parallel. <laughs> oh my hip! Oh, God. <laughs> Why did he pull him down? Yeah, he's like He was doing fine. He's like, let me just <laughs> <laughs> That instructor is terrible. <laughs> first of all, let's give this old guy some props Dude. for serving for the first time at like freaking 80 years old. Totally. Like he's a Res badass. Respect. Jeez, who says plus size models aren't productive? This is the easiest money this guy's ever made. <laughs> <laughs> Look at everyone just using him. But does this piss people off? I mean, it's kind of disrespectful, right? Or no? I mean, he did it. Poor lady. All right, it's a new year. Uh, uh. I'm okay. Everything's I could oh, wow. yeah. uh, talk about the first day of the new year going wrong. Ugh. Could you imagine she's like going to the gym? <laughs> <laughs> Poor girl. Could you imagine like your first day of the gym? Like I'm gonna get my life together, and she, this happens to her. Dude, this is the Whoa, sickest. Has this been gravy? No, this is uh, John Wayne Freeman. <laughs> Dude, check him out. He Whoa. gets so pitted. Dude. Oh my God. That was sick. Is that the worst feeling ever? To go back and look at that footage? <laughs> like in his mind, he's so barreled. Like right there, he thinks he's in the tube. There's a weird thing when you first start serving. Yeah. Where you're always thinking you're barreled, but you're not. <laughs> I think it happened to me once in Mexico. <laughs> when I was a kid, my dad was watching me surf and I thought I was getting barreled on everyone. I was like, <laughs> And then I get to the beach and I was like talking about my barrel. He's like, you didn't get barreled. He's like, that's called a head dip. A head dip. Like a head dip? And he's like, yeah, you're just sticking your head in the And the waves water. over your head. Uh, so when you're deep in that barrel, you're like, you're seeing, you'll see it. You'll, you'll, you're like in it. The best tip I ever got was uh, when you're in the barrel, look up and you'll know you're tubed because you can see the lip line. Okay. So if someone's like, has their head down. Yeah. If you have your head down in the tube, It'll f it'll feel intense, so you think you're in it. But if you're not looking up at the lip line, then you'll know. What is it like to get tubed? To explain the whole freaking <laughs> okay, thing. Here we go. Come on, baby. What does it feel like? Turn like, on the music. What does it feel like to get barreled and tubed? <laughs> they say it's like the best feeling in surfing. What does it feel like, Sterling? It's no. Is it noisy? Is it windy? Is it what is it? Getting tubed feels like the most magical. It's like 
You know the lion witch in the wardrobe? When yeah. They sneak through the wardrobe. It feels like that. Going through the cupboard. Yeah, like you get to the other. So once you're in the barrel, it's like a whole new world. And it's like, wee wee wee, and no. you're like, you're like, whoa, where am I? So I'm in enchanted land. You've entered a different dimension. It puts you in this crazy meditative state where it's because it's so intense and beautiful. Yeah. So you just you just like stop and you're just like. Oh. Time slows down. Yeah, it's heaven. Dude, and then when you get spit out, you just you get chills. When down you your make spine. it, you're like, "Oh my gosh, I can't believe it!" Because it. it's so hard to learn how to time the wave, and right? Stuff. So once you get it, but once you get um, better at surfing, like we'll get tubed, and we, we don't even think about it anymore. Because it's just another day in the office. We're just so used to it. So, like, do you think it's cheating when people go to these wave pools? And but see, even then, I see guys that are pretty good at surfing trying so hard to get barreled at wave pulls and they're like and they barely get in and they get they shoot out barrel it's a technique that's really hard to figure out because you need good waves right and, and is it a lot of drag like i see guys dropping their hands at the well like if if the tube is coming and you're going too fast you put your arm in and it slows you down. slows you down and then you let go when you need it speed is just right okay and then like you lean forward, if you're going too slow, you get like forward and like put your arms out like, come on. Just <laughs> to get the weight. Like, yeah. like oh. Have you ever been barreled and be like, I gotta make it and just <laughs> like so many hey, times. Crap. Yeah, like it just takes oh, you. Yeah. Do you remember your first barrel? My first barrel, I was like maybe nine. And I remember um, I was on the East Coast and it was a double up and I, it just happened by accident. I was just going normally and the wave doubled up and it just goes, and I was in the tube. All of a sudden I was like, Oh, what do I do? <laughs> and, uh, you got I it. closed my eyes. I was like, yeah. ah, and then I came out. I was like, <gasps> dude. And I came out with a beard. <laughs> I remember telling my dad, I was like, I got two. And he's like, Oh yeah, we'll describe it. And I was like, I saw like the tunnel and like, he was like, mm, sounds like you got two. Okay. This is hell. Oh my god look how crowded it is this looks like surf zombies this is so scary no thanks what is going on oh, why are they cutting him off why are they fighting him <laughs> <laughs> they're everywhere why are they so mean to him is this the last day on earth and people need to surf dude i think this is gold coast australia and people are so gnarly no thank you so aggressive mine this is mine not mine gosh i remember my first session there I was paddling out and this old Australian guy just does a cutback right into me and kept going. And I looked at my board and I had a giant hole in my board. <laughs> he just, his fins went. <laughs> you could just smell beer as he went by. And I was like, whoa, <laughs> like I wasn't ready for this. It's like vitamins. Look at that. There's like 60 people right there. And they're all waiting for you to fall. Yeah. They okay. all want you to fall to get your way. They're like, fall, fall, fall. So they all sit there. They yeah. don't try to get out of the way. They're like, all right, he's going to fall. And wh why are they beating him up? <laughs> he had to do so much. This is the best skateboarding dog I've ever seen in my life. I think he's, he's sponsored. He's Japanese? Dude, he could be the first sponsored dog skater. You think? Seriously. He like could have his own shoe line? He could ride for friggin' Nike. For dogs. Yeah. Whoa. Watch what he does, dude. <laughs> what? <laughs> How does he know? And look, he pushes. I've never seen a dog. <laughs> <laughs> what he's doing 360s dude jeez he's hanging 10 he could start a, a dog league dude who is this guy look at him looking back he's a ledge <laughs> <laughs> leg <laughs> you know what this makes me believe that reincarnation is real right like that was friggin an old skater in back For in the day sure. that's jay adams that's Jay Adams. Rest in peace. <laughs> che a poop. Jeez. Oh, my God. He's gone. <gasps> Did you see him go up? No, he's got, he has got. got deleted. High. The wave ate him. Is it fake? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it looks, look, he just gets deleted. It's so big, he <laughs> has to go up. That's the biggest wave ever. That's nuts. Why? <laughs> if you knew you would live, you wouldn't go for it? How good would I live after? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, if you did that, you'd be a legend. No, I wouldn't. You'd have a statue here. I'd be another name that just got deleted after 100 no, years. No, people would talk about you behind your back. It wasn't that <laughs> Why not big. to my face? <laughs> it wasn't that big. <laughs> so, dude. What? Have you seen Italo's new MILF training program? Italo Ferreira? Yeah, he trains MILFs. Someone's got to. 
Yeah, check it. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. I want to live in America. Who wants to live in America? <laughs> <laughs> dude, Italo's sexy, dude. He's so sexy. Look at all these chicks. Look at this MILF program he's got. Going. He's got his Oakleys on. Oh, yeah. Come with me dude, to I, the islands. I live by this standard. Never trust a guy with white Oakleys on. Really? Never. I thought it was white Arnett's. Those two. <laughs> Those are just as bad. Any white sunglasses <sighs> and tattoos. Dude, white sunglasses are like, <sighs> douchebag, douchebag. <laughs> <laughs> Japanese douchebag? There's someone watching this right now with white. This is on going. <laughs> exactly like, honey. The guy who wears white sunglasses, they always like, they move around a little faster than most people. Like, yeah. <laughs> what do you mean? They're always jogging. They're like coked up. Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> yeah, they're sketchy. Oh, poor LeBron. Why is he brushing his ear so hard? <laughs> What's he brushing? Why is he brushing it so hard? This is why I don't want to ever try to get my hair back. Because if LeBron can't, I can't. I know. We have we can do anything but grow hair back. Dude, the, like Theo Vaughn talks about it. He says he gets hair taken out of the back of his head and put up front. And I'm, it says it takes days. It hurts. It's like, I'm like, just put a beanie or a hat on, dude. Right. But I guess if I was in show business, my tune might change. I mean, that probably is all hair plants. Even LeBron? Yeah. Oh, for sure. Oh, my god. What is going on? Kanye. Where are they for her to be in her bathing suit? Confidence, man. He's confident to wear that sweater. <laughs> I know we talk way too much about Kelly, but there's this fad going on right now in AI where you, yeah, just, have, have you seen it where they go, show me a happy cat. And then it's like, show me a happier cat. And it just keeps. So I, I was just kind of bored the other day. So I'm going to give this to Sterling. These are, I typed in Kelly Slater surfing hard. And then it's like more harder, <laughs> harder. Okay. So, so you can just look at this him. This is as, Kelly. He looks like Paul Fisher. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he does. So Kelly Slater. What Kelly is Kelly Slater? <laughs> Kelly Slater surfing hard. Okay, this is Kelly Slater surfing hard. Dude, look at his freaking arms. There's so many veins, and he's goofy. Yeah. Okay, so what's the next one? Surfing even harder. <laughs> this is Kelly. He's doing a slob grab off a floater. What the? Who's the board sponsor? I'm trying to zoom. <laughs> dude that's freaking gnarly see it's a little harder a little more intense okay kelly hard he's regular now <laughs> <laughs> oh my god that's crazy kelly that wave is like a tsunami i know look it at looks the... like tahiti in a full suit <laughs> what look at the full suit it's got freaking veins yep he's got two watches he's got watches on both arms <laughs> all right time. harder what? <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> Two waves breaking into each other. Wait, is that the right one? Let me Sharks. See. Dude, it's There's crazy. volcanoes. <laughs> Pterodactyls. Are those shark birds? Okay, <laughs> harder. Even harder. Then I typed in even more intense. Okay, here we go. It's getting harder. What? <laughs> He's on a bigger board. Look at the squid. Oh, my God. There's a squid. Look at the demon squid. This is crazy. All right. So I think this is the last one. This is the last one. This is, this is well, before you go to it. This is as gnarly as surfing could get. This is the max level of Kelly Slater intensity surfing. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. He trends. What? <laughs> it's him? Oh, yes. He's he the devil? <laughs> <laughs> Look at that, dude. This is crazy. It's Kelly. Kelly has a... A Slater castle? <laughs> and he's surfing in the middle of the tsunami. The middle. There's, why is there palm trees? I don't know. Look at the shark. So this is what AI imagines Kelly doing. This is like what Kelly, when he takes ayahuasca, yeah. he's like. Whoa. He's on the toilet, just like. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's gnarly. Dude. What if Kelly's like a. Like a 12th dimensional, like... Demon? Demon. If there's a surfer hell, that's what it looks like. <laughs> Kelly's in charge. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know that I just learned the other day that it's not pre-Madonna? My whole life I thought it was pronounced pre-Madonna, but it's prima Donna. Really? Did you not know that? I did not know that. You're lying. I thought it was like pre-marital. Like, see, pre-Madonna, it's prima Donna. 
No, it isn't. Yes, it is. Is this the whatchamacallit effect? <laughs> the Mandela effect? My whole life, I thought it was like prima donna, like, like oh, you're just being like Madonna the singer. It's prima Madonna. It's, <laughs> it's prima Donna, like that. What? It's yeah. not Madonna? No, it's not Madonna. I thought it was because of Madonna. <laughs> no, it's prima Donna. Does people know this? No, I just heard about it the other is day. Is this the Mandela effect? <laughs> no. This Have you is, heard of that? Yes, but that has nothing to do with it. So my, Yeah, keep going. Have you heard the Mandela effect actually is the government trying to trick us? Dude, okay, so I saw a video the other day about this girl with a Fruit of the Loom logo. Yeah. Yeah, she's like, no, I know it had a, what is this little like bro- a crescent? Ba- basket. Yeah, the basket. And she's like, no, and they were lying. They're like, nope, there's no, and then she went and found an old shirt and it had the basket with the logo. Dude, like the Berenstein Bears? Yeah. And they're like, oh no, it's actually spelled this way. So they say that the government is trying to see how fast they can erase history and how much we'll accept it as humans. Like, oh yeah, it was never there. Yeah, they're like, oh, they're dumb enough. Like the Sinbad and the wizard. Freaking Sinbad. <laughs> <laughs> he was I, he was in a, a movie. Dude, I watched that movie t- a ton. Sinbad was a wizard? And all of a sudden it's Shazam with Shaq. And I remember that one too. Yeah, so they deleted it. But Sinbad had his own Shazam. Right. I watched it all the time. But they're saying it never existed. I know. They're trying to trick us. So the government does weird stuff. Maybe they're just bored up there in the White House. I remember the chicken filet sign was different. Chick-fil-A, yeah. (laughs) Uh, Does the world still hate? You know, isn't it funny? You know how, like, they wanted to cancel Chick-fil-A because they hated, they said stuff about gay people. Right. But the chicken is so good that people are like, all right. (laughs) (laughs) It's just funny how things, they'll get canceled, but if it's good chicken. It's too good. (laughs) We'll keep I mean, going. it's chicken, y'all. Dude, it's biscuits. <laughs> yeah, but anyways, it's not prima donna. It's prima donna. That kind of blew my mind. Uh, did you really not know that? I didn't. My whole life, I thought it was prima donna. Yeah, just Ugh. like premarital sex. Yeah, like prima marital donna. But is it prima arital? What? <laughs> what does that mean? Like the whole time I thought it was premarital sex. Oh, no. Sex. Oh, so it's, it's actually prima it's prima arital sex. <laughs> Are no. you having prima arital sex? It's, pre- it's prima <laughs> arital. Oh, that blew my mind. Are they dude. having prima arital sex? Dude, being from the South, when when you would hear someone's like having premarital sex. Oh, you better watch it. Dude, did it not blow your mind? I was like, they're going to I would hell. get chills. Like, what? Yeah, I'd be like, oh, dude. There's Why are th- they risking it? <laughs> 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 they're going to hell. Like, so you'd be it. at church and you would hear, like, so and so and so and so. It's like, why, why why are they going for it? Like, <laughs> I remember hearing youth pastors be like, don't have premarital sex. I did it and it was the worst. And I'm like, I got this rash. <laughs> no, I would be like, well, he did it and he's fine. Like, I'll go I mean, He it. looks fine. Yeah, he's happy. Dude, I remember at your church, there was this one guy. <laughs> yeah. A youth pastor. Okay. And he would play guitar and he had the bracelets. This is way back. Oh. Yeah. Oh, it was his son. Probably. Yeah, <laughs> we'll cut it out. There was this kid <laughs> leading worship. <clears throat> he would lead worship, I'm and God. there was always eyeballs on me because it's like, oh, pro surfer Sterling. Yeah, um, around. small town. Yeah, super small town. So I would get there, and everyone would stare at me, and everyone would be like, "Is he gonna sing?" And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> "There was so much pressure on me to sing to worship." Yeah. And I never could get into church worship. I felt so stupid. And you had people watching you, so it made it And weird. I didn't understand why we're, <laughs> blessed being the freaking man. That Our I church is not weird it. like that. Don't you dare. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know no, what you just mean. normal singing. Yeah. I couldn't, yeah, I couldn't. <laughs> I always felt so <laughs> stupid. So I just, I just didn't. I, I never sang my whole life. Right. I could, it Let's just, do it right now. <laughs> <laughs> I felt so stupid. I didn't understand it. Right. It felt forced. So what what were you saying about the worship guy? <laughs> so uh, he he saw that I just stood there and didn't sing. He's like <laughs> from the stage. <laughs> yeah, he would he would he like why isn't he singing? <laughs> so he, after church, he came out. And he's like, hey, dude, I, you know, like you know, we're, in the Bible it says like you should sing. <laughs> <laughs> and he was giving me such a hard time. He's uh. like. He's like, you think you're just like too good and like, you know, the God, he should not have done. God sees you and stuff. <laughs> so he guilt tripped me. And then the next weekend he got busted for premarital <laughs> sex. <laughs> so that when you were I was like, like ah, <laughs> prima arital sex. Oh, <laughs> uh, and he never sang. 
So he got fully busted for Ugh. premarital sex, and he was <sighs> hamming on me for not singing. And I was b- actually not having premarital sex. Yeah, you were doing. I was doing. Me and the Lord were yeah. doing it right. Right. <laughs> You, I love what you said. It's not. Where are you going to risk it? <laughs> uh, well, you know what? If you, and then he got kicked out of church. If you look to people, that's you're always going to be bummed. Okay, so the uh, the other day someone wrote me. You remember how like we told everybody that we were invited to Laird's house? Right. I don't think people believe it. Weren't we invited? But oh, from yeah. Gabby wrote uh, sent us a voice message. We're going to go this summer. Let's play it. Hi Sterling, it's Gabby Reese. How are you? I do show Laird your videos. Uh, we appreciate you. We know the rules. If you ever do want to get in the deep end, all you have to do is reach out if you're up for it. <laughs> We were really invited to Laird Hamilton's house. We were scared we might go one day. We're training. We're (laughs) training. Dude, here's the deal. If people aren't liking, commenting, and subscribing, it means they don't love us. Guys, you know what I'm saying? They don't love us. What's going on? If because think about it, they're watching the show. We don't. don't, It's free, and then they don't even like it. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, it's crazy. Subscribe. Do it, guys. Subscribe, comment, like. Get anywhere. Uh, You think you'll have another baby? Or is that too personal for the podcast? I would love another baby. Really? Do you want a girl? Yeah. Oh. So Were you a mama's boy, you think? My parents like grew up in the Civil War. <laughs> <laughs> so like <laughs> my parents kind of grew up. There is no like touch or Yeah. I think our Spencer crew, no one hugs or touches or nothing. Mm. It's weird. Yeah, I remember at our Spencer Christmases, like <laughs> everyone's like oh. Yeah, no. like, there's so many people I never knew at our Oh, I Christmas hated parties. that. You'd see a new boyfriend. And they'd be like, that's actually your cousin, Jenny. <laughs> <laughs> no, they'd be like, that's old Barbara. And you're like, oh. Opa's son. Yeah, we didn't I know like, that. Who are they? Yeah, Spencer's, are, we don't hug. We don't. We barely pit, fist pump. Is that how you say it? <laughs> fist pump. Do you think surfing set you up good for life, made you tough? Oh, yeah. Because I think, personally, I think surfers are super tough. Yeah, we're tougher. I think so. Like, because you guys are like walking long beaches. <laughs> Honestly, being from the Gulf Coast made me so tough. Really? Being from the Gulf, it gave me the brain injury, but it gave me the ability to get through the brain injury. Ooh. Dude, in the 90s, people treated us like, like scum. Crap. Like, seriously, like crap. Weird. And my dad was, he was the accepted one. Because he was like the because he my dad won the first man on man pro surfing contest in America. It's called man on man. Yeah, it's where it's a man on man heat. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> a little sexual. That's just a, okay. <laughs> on the East Coast or was it in the seventies? Where was it? It was in North Carolina. Oh, sick! There's good. Surf. He won a thousand dollars, dude. Back then, that's like three thousand. It was like 20K. <laughs> Dude, that's insane. Or more. Yeah, back in the 70s. And what's crazy, my dad's surf shop got robbed what? right before he left. So he needed the money. So yeah, so he needed he needed <laughs> to win or he the surf shop would have closed. No way. So he won the surf shop. <laughs> he won the surf <laughs> contest, yeah. came back, paid for the boards that he was in debt to with um, Greg that's, Knoll. Right. And... uh. It saved the surf shop. Heck yeah. And that's why we have Interlight Surf Shops and today. Interlight Surf Shop wouldn't have made it if he didn't win that contest. Dude, that, that's insane. And freaking Hank Warner shaped that board. Hank Warner. If you guys don't know Hank Warner, go follow him. Here's his Instagram handle. <laughs> but dude, freaking being a Gulf Coaster made me so tough. Just look gritty. It's hard to live here. It's either too hot yes. or too freezing. Right. Like it gets... Like right now, it's 22 degrees outside. Dude, I'm going to show a quick picture. This is my front yard. The waves here are hard to ride. Like it's like super deep and then it just breaks on like shin high sandbar. Yeah. Deesh! And then there's an obese tourist right there going, huh? <laughs> and then there's an obese tourist. like, <laughs> Dude, every time I scratch now, I'm like, am I obese? I am obese. <laughs> <laughs> when I did surf contests, it was like all the East Coast guys and their, yeah. ju- their bros are judging and yeah. like, I'm like, from the Gulf, I just drove eight hours. I'm exhausted. <laughs> your back hurts. You're 12. <laughs> it was so much work. Yeah, you guys would drive everywhere. What's up with we that? I had to drive eight hours to the East Coast. Yeah, you guys would drive from Pensacola to the East Coast. I drove the- to the East Coast from age like eight <laughs> yeah. to 22 every weekend. Dude, that's nuts. So it took years to break through. It's like you just keep showing up and eventually, right. and like I'm so charming. <laughs> 
But honestly, like being funny was like my way to like break through. Right. Because I'd be hanging around those guys and if I could make them laugh, they liked me. They're like, all right, you can be in. And they would judge me correctly. Right. And oh, because you would get judged wrong mm -hmm. if because you're- So it took years for me to win a contest and I was already better than those guys. So when you started cracking jokes, like, all right, we'll give them a score. Then I like, yeah, once I learned like to be friends with everyone and everyone let their guard down, they accepted yeah. me. and. So then I won like East Coast title, won like national title, Dude. and it was like, okay. Like, what is national title? Like for the entire- mm -hmm. Nationals. On the East Coast? No, that's in California. Oh, sorry guys. How old were you when you won the national title? Sorry. 18. Dude. And that's when my dad was like, if you don't win, you have to go to college. <laughs> <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> dude no wonder you won you had a little fire under your butt oh surfing that's what was the bummer side of like being like a a pro surfer's son yeah because you're in his shadow well it's like you know he grew up he grew up with he didn't have a dad right Five kid home. They're poor. Mom works at Dunkin' Donuts. Krispy Kreme. Krispy Kreme. <laughs> so he grew up like he had to fight for everything. Right. He was tough. So he instilled that with us. Like he was just like, you know, like if you don't make it, you got to go to college and or work at Krispy Kreme. But I mean, realistically, it is cutthroat. You know, it like, is. Yeah. You can't be lazy. You can't be. You gotta be tough becoming a pro server was so intense for me because like oh i don't want i want to serve yeah you want i got to taste the yeah. glory like in hawaii <laughs> <A little like>. taste. <laughs> i don't want to let this go so it was either surf or you wouldn't have gone to college let's just be honest well he was like you can work in the surf shop yeah and i was like oh what's that mean <laughs> like, <laughs> like you don't want that dude working in the surf shop is the hardest thing ever dude you imagine sitting there and everyone's driving by like yeah. going surfing no thanks. i need wax oh and everyone's like Ooh, we're going surfing and you're sitting there like under yeah. like gross fluorescent <laughs> lights like all That's the true. boards you... are turning yellow like <laughs> You don't want to be a surfer and work at a surf shop. Mm -hmm. They want you need like video gamers or something that work there. Yeah, you want someone that doesn't love surfing. Yeah, dude. So you think your humor was like a little beep, like yeah. a wedge to get into the stuff? Yeah, it was my way to. Cause yeah, I was a golf coaster. Like, I got paid less. My whole career, I got paid less. Yeah, that's what drove me nuts. Like at Billabong, like. You know, like I was doing so much better than these guys and had so much happening and like they would pay like this guy from Cali like 100K. And he's like, here's 20K for the year. Yeah, I'm like. That's so sad that just because. Just because I'm from the Gulf. It's racist. It was racist. <laughs> <laughs> it it didn't change until I started making movies. Okay, like Surf Madness. And mm, when I started making surf movies, making it fun and stuff. Yeah. It like totally, ch and the world kind of changed too. Like uh, people liked um, someone being from like somewhere new. Right, kind of an anomaly or whatever. Yeah, like so then that became trend, it switched. Mm. And it was like cooler to not be from California. Oh. It was like cooler to be from- Cause like, everyone's from California. Saudi Arabia, like you're <laughs> the first server. <laughs> first. I remember this guy from Germany that was a pro server. Everyone's like, what? It's like a Germany. So do you remember any trips on the East Coast with your dad where the van broke down or anything weird? Any travel issues? I remember one time this tornado was coming at us. <laughs> 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 what? My dad was so hardcore. Like he wouldn't pull over <laughs> for you to go to the bathroom. He's like, hold it. Just crap. So I would pee in like Coke cans. Like, dang. So then this huge storm is coming. And he's like, we, we got to stay on time. <laughs> We got a heat in two hours. Well, he was. Uh, it was always about staying on time. Yeah, and, like getting. So I remember the gnarliest storm, and I'm watching two clouds like, mm. and he's like, mm, "We can beat it." <laughs> oh, you could see. So like the tornado starts spawning down. I'm like, ah. and he's like, <laughs> he goes faster, and we go under it. It's like, <laughs> no way. I remember looking up. I'm like, <coughs> you drove through a tornado. He's <laughs> like, ah, I'm like dad, no. <laughs> Did your brother travel with you? Oh, yeah. Wow, what brother. was that like with you three? Oh, my God. My brother is, like, so funny back in the day. Dude, he's still funny. Well, now it's, like, conspiracy <laughs> stuff. <laughs> Dancy. But back then, like, uh, my brother got super into vitamins. Yeah. 
they were when they first came out like Flintstones. <laughs> well, <laughs> vitamins like took off in the nineties. Yeah, they first came yeah. out. Yancey got a ton, and he <laughs> he left them in the car to, under the seat too oh, long, and no. it just turned to powder. <laughs> so Yancey, his car, the headlight went out, and he's like, but if he held the. Uh, the light, if he pulled it back, the brights would come on. Yeah, yeah, that's an old trick. So he like, <laughs> so he's like driving at night, yeah, like back home from Jackson, and he's like holding the light, <laughs> and he's like, Ooh, and he, um, something about the uh, car needed to stay above 60 or something would happen. <laughs> so he's like, had to stay, he's like holding it. He's up in his driveway. <laughs> he, he said he was like going 20, he's going like 90, and like he just flies by a cop oh, and they gosh. pull him over <laughs> and <clears throat> Yancey, he was, he's, he was starving and he, <laughs> so he got these powdered donuts. Yeah. Oh no. I know he didn't this have is. time to wipe it off his face. So they pull over and he like looks up and there's powder all over. So he's like, <laughs> and they're like, get out. And they like cuffed him and they found his vitamins and they thought it they're was like, aha. And he's like, they're vitamins. I swear. <laughs> So he had to go to jail over vitamins, no. and they like went, tested it and realized it was vitamins. And oh my gosh! Powdered donuts, vitamins—that <laughs> is hilarious. Did he ever let you drive as you got older? Once I g got sixteen, I was like in Hawaii mostly. Oh okay. So there wasn't a Billabong house yet. Yeah. I'm probably like fourteen, and um, Joel Parkinson uh -huh. and uh, Mick Fanning are staying at. They just got like this house for the Billabong guy, and they're like in their late twenties or something. No, they're like eighteen. Oh, oh, you were young. They're like, oh, Joel Parkinson and McFanning, they're like the next Kelly Slaters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they were so wild. Like party boys. Like they drank all day <laughs> and they would watch porn. Or like, one of They would just have it on all day long. There's this guy, Rick, who's in charge of the house and he's like, no toilet paper. He made us use- um, Porn mags? <laughs> <laughs> made us use a, a, like a squirt guns to- like but, our handmade bidets. Oh, that's the first bidet? <laughs> yeah, that was that's my first experience. Super soaker? <laughs> Wait, because it would mess the piping up if you flush the mm -hmm. toilet. Oh. He was so anal about it. He's like, you better spray that asshole. <laughs> Who the So heck? freaking Parco and Mick. I remember one night. I'm like, I'm, four, I'm like 14. From the Bible Belt. And I'm with Jordy Smith. Oh. And Jordy hadn't grown into his hands yet. Or his nose. <laughs> <laughs> or his butt. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a big nose. So me and Jordy, like, we're scared. And um, <laughs> to Joel and Mick, they they're like, it went flat for a little bit. Yeah. And uh, they're like, we gotta sacrifice some boards, mate. We gotta sacrifice. Oh, some they're boards, Australian. Mate. <laughs> they're Australian. Joel and Mick Fanny. Okay, okay. For the audience, <laughs> I didn't know. Yeah, they're from Australia. No wonder they're, they're wild. Both world champions, and they're Australian, so they're freaking nuts. They were nuts then. <laughs> Like they drank beer like it was Gatorade <laughs> between <laughs> serves. Me and Jordy are like scared. We're like have to bidet and like. <laughs> so Joel's like, mate, we gotta sacrifice some boys, mate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they would shave each other's like, they would do mohawks and like, and uh, so one night they burned the boards and I remember uh, like Joel and Mick, they're on top of the house with a burning board. They're like, <laughs> I am a golden god. And they threw it, they're like, yeah. <laughs> threw a burning circle. And I, I'm like, Jordy, no. And I run and tackle him and the board almost, the flaming board almost <laughs> hit. I like saved Jordy's whole career. From Mick Fanning throwing an on fire surfboard. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you need to write a book. <laughs> <laughs> These are all scenes in a movie that need to be cut together. How long were you pro surfer? Like, what does that even mean? Like what, is, what does a pro surfer even mean? Dude, that's why I want to start the black belt system. Right. From the last episode. There's so many guys that make like a hundred bucks or something. And yeah. you're like, well, I'm pro. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> you want to have like an actual university. Yeah. I want there to be some kind of like, just so like there's credibility where guys can't be like start a vlog and they're like, oh, I'm a pro surfer. Just stop people just claiming they're pro surfing. Oh. And also like make people want to be great. Yeah, like work I, for that's it. what I that's what drives me crazy about soft tops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It stops you from like 
Yeah. You can ride a soft top on a Sunday when no one's watching. Yeah. You know, you're a little tipsy on some West Peaks. Yeah, on some or you're hungover. <laughs> It's fun getting good at surfing. Yeah. Like you should want to be the best you could ever be because it's fun. I think that's where as a core skater from the day, I look at the bidet from back in the day. <laughs> from the uh, bidet. <laughs> I look at surf skate and it's like, you aren't skating. Like it, well, I get it. It's fun. It feels cool. You can do a curve or whatever, but like learn a kickflip, learn how to ollie over a broom dude, handle. Surf skates should only be like for uh, training. Right. But and it's you, become you like. You don't. You don't like film, like <laughs> you don't film your training and be like, look at this. Yeah. <laughs> like it, it's, it's to help people learn, understand how to ride a surfboard. Right. But it's kind of morphed and evolved into this whole. Yeah. Then people are like, no, look, we're just riding these. Yeah. It's and like, it looks stupid. But what's funny is I love surf skates. I know. We've talked it's about it. It's all I ride. I love it too now. It's I've got so my... fun. I can just surf on pavement this is one from flush collection yeah it's just funny that it's become like it's own but like don't film yourself doing it yeah because you look dumb surfing <laughs> on, on ah! a, in a public's parking lot spray spray so i was gonna ask this did you have a syph syphilis did, did you have syphilis <laughs> <laughs> did you did you have, <laughs> gosh did you have a surfing mentor well obviously my dad for sure. Besides um, your dad, because your dad obviously is your biggest one. What here's you... my mentor list. Okay, mentor list with Sterling Spencer. I was lucky when I was young. I got to surf with Skip Fry every day. Right. And who is and he Hank to people Warner. who don't know Skip Fry? Skip Fry is like the godfather of like modern day surfing. Really? His fishes were really popular. He was like a just legend surfer shaper and still is he's like 82 still shaping still gliding like a seagull skip fry hake warner we lived in san diego and i surfed crystal pier every freaking morning crystal pier. and i remember learning to do airs and surfing with skip and hank like i feel like it kept my surfing like, pure style wise hmm because where are guys learning nowadays off youtube what, what style is or don't even learn dude style is like you have to put in the time of like studying. We yeah. used to watch surf videos all day long. Right. And study. There's this um, pro skater. Most people know who it is. Jamie Thomas. He kind of took Chris Cole under his wing. Who's like mm -hmm. this legendary skater, if you don't know. And he used to push Mongo. Chris oh, Cole. Really? Chris Cole used to push Mongo. <laughs> and Chris, Jamie was like, bro. You have such amazing potential. If you stop pushing Mongo, you could have a career in skateboarding. And Chris Cole went, Choo! and everyone wanted to be Chris really? Cole. Holy I mean, that might not be the total story, but that style's a thing. And if you find a mentor like a Jamie Thomas or a right. Hank, it's like they can guide you. Like Aki was a mentor for a while. Yeah. On Billabong. You got to surf a lot with him Andy. in Hawaii. Andy Irons. Me and Andy got close, but he died. Like, yeah, right when you were starting to get close to him, right? Yeah, I was the last person to surf with him. I know. Those pictures are so crazy, dude. That was crazy. You know, Rob Machado, obviously, yeah, I lived with him for a while. Over the years. He taught me a ton. That's when I, when I was with Rob, that's when I started serving like twin fins and stuff. Really? He kind of opened that world to you? He was telling me like, hey, when I got off tour, I just rode a fish for an entire year. Really? And he's like, it will, cha it will help your surfing. Hmm. So I did that. Why does it help your surfing to someone who doesn't understand what the heck you're talking about? Because... Three fin is like too easy. Okay. You can get on a three fin and it'll just do whatever you want. You don't have to think about it really. Okay. It's more control. And a twin fin, you have to use your rails and you have to like feel it more. Uh. And you have to like squat lower and like it's way more of an organic feeling. Hmm. And that's why I love when I switched to twin fins and stuff and started like i was riding christensen at the, t at the time and what's funny about christensen though like he didn't want me to ride his twin fins why <laughs> you trying to sell tr triple well fins? chris he's like an extreme dude so he would shape like big wave boards for like greg long and stuff okay and he didn't want to be known for a, as an alternative shaper because mm. i think in that world like anyone can shape all alternative boards okay it's just hard to say <laughs> <laughs> it's just hard to say alternative i think in his mind he felt like anyone can shape twin fins interesting and it is easier to shape those kind of boards but who cares a surf i'm not even thinking about a shaper so i was riding at billabong i was shortboarding still mm -hmm. and 
um, I live down the street in Carlsbad from his uh, factory. Okay. And I was riding for Firewire forever, but Firewire went through this weird phase where like they didn't know if they were gonna make it. And there was no one on the team. Taj Burrow quit. He's like, later, mate. And I would be at Rob's house and Rob would make fun of me for riding Firewire so hardcore. He's what? Like, what are you riding Fire? Are you crazy? Like, <laughs> the boards are from Thailand. Like, <laughs> I felt so weird. I'm like, oh, really? <laughs> So I went to Chris's factory. I just walked in. I was like, hey. And he, they knew who I was and stuff. I mean, I was pretty popular at the time. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. People knew. Yeah. I got a couple of Chris shortboards, and they worked pretty good. And um, so he was like, you're going to go back on tour, right? I was like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> he wanted me to, like, get on tour and, like, shred these his shortboards oh. and, like, give him that. that yeah, that like, notch oh, on the he, belt. I can do it. Yeah. But, um... <laughs> You're like, huh? I didn't really like the shortboards. Oh crap! And honestly, that's where the Bob Saget skit came from. Shut up! <laughs> the, I said this with a quad fin. <laughs> Cut to the clip. Maybe I need to put the four fin quad setup in. <laughs> what? You, you dummy! You big dummy! I, I shaped those with a heavy concave four quad setup. <sighs> you fool! That script inspiration from the Bob Saget came from when you were going to Christensen. Yeah, because Chris wanted me to read the <laughs> short books. <laughs> so he was so frustrated. And I, was, and I had Mayhems. Yeah. And Mayhems, for anyone who don't, like, they're just kind of the best short boards. You heard it here. That I've written. Oh, well, you know. And I have a funny story about Mayhem. Okay. <laughs> Mayhem's like a real, he, he'll say it. He'll tell you. Who's he? Matt Biolas. He rides. He shaped a lot of surfboards. Okay, okay. He'll just say it the way it is. I I remember one time. <laughs> I remember one time I was going to get some boards that I ordered. Okay. And I walked in. I was with this guy Pete Terrace. Yeah. Who was the editor of Surfing Magazine? Yeah. So Pete walked in first, and uh, Matt was yelling about me. He's like. Sterling hadn't paid his boards yet. He's like, that guy's a B-grade pro surfer. <laughs> <laughs> That's where I got That's that That's where from. you got the line? <laughs> Dude. Got to the class. If anything, you're a B-grade pro surfer that wears glasses to be different and makes silly little videos. I would never do something like that. Matt Biolas called me a B-grade pro surfer. <laughs> <laughs> and he was so mad. And he's like, he hasn't paid for his boards. That guy's a kook. Like, he's a B-grade pro <laughs> surfer. <laughs> and I was around the corner about to walk in. And then <coughs> Matt Bios is uh, the main guy that worked at the office there. He pops up. He's like, no, he paid for him. He paid them. <laughs> he was nervous. And I then I walk around the corner and Matt's like, Sterling, like, love your work, dude. Like, <laughs> Were you pissed? I was Cut. broken hearted. You were embarrassed. Because, you know, those are like, I'm from the Gulf, you know. Yeah. Like, and, um, and some kind of famous shaver just called you a bee. <laughs> So I like picked up the boards and like <laughs> cried on the way home. Like, <laughs> Pete is like, it's okay, buddy. Pete thought it was so funny. It is funny, but it's not. What's a B grade? You so you, you got mad because you couldn't pay for the boards, or but you did. No, I, he just thought I didn't. <laughs> and shapers are so grumpy. If yeah. you don't pay for a board, they're like, ah! <laughs> they dude. get so mad. Dude, so that whole story is how the Bob is, Saget script. So back to Christensen. <laughs> Christensen is him and Matt Biolis, they're so competitive. Shapers. Right. Chris shaped like good big wave boards, but he hadn't proved short boards yet. Oh. So I had all these mayhems. Right. And I was filming Gold the movie. Hmm. And he was, I was trying to get a good board, but I couldn't get a good short board. Hmm. So all those lines you hear from Bob Saget. Yes. Just like, I shaped that. With a quad setup. He, he was like, I shaped that board for Brad Gerlach back in 97. <laughs> Dude, I love. He was up on the wall. He's like, look, <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, okay, okay. So I was like, I was like, can I? He had all these cool fishes, and oh. I was like, can I get a fish? And he's like, mm, okay, take one. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting, dude. Well, shapers are a different breed. Uh, what dude. could you connect it to? Like a shaper is like a shapers are like the freaking um, like a car mechanic. Yeah, that's like, <laughs> and you get there, and you're like. Why is the damn diesel <laughs> nozzle? Yeah, why is the lighter fluid not? This is actually going to cost $5,000. So, <laughs> and we've talked about this. It's all the fumes, dude. 
Dude, it's the fumes. It's the fumes. You know in skateboarding that, that this is looked down upon? Mongo grab? No. <laughs> Mall grab. Mall grab. <laughs> <laughs> so in skateboarding, if you're holding it like this, that's called Never. A, it's a mall grab. You know why they call it a mall grab? It's because all these military dudes or whoever will go to the mall by a skateboard mm. and they're like, ooh, and you're never, yeah. don't ever. That's where I think Kelly got it because you hold your board the like nonchalance. this. The nonchalance grab. So is there anything like that in skate in surfing that you, it, like, people have been asking, is there a mall grab in surfing? Of holding your board. Yeah, and I think I know it. If you're holding it like an idiot with two hands, like, because <laughs> when I'm walking back, my arms are tired. If you don't have a big long board and you're holding it on your head. Oh. Like, so if you have a short board on your- And your leash is dragging, you're like- <laughs> Like if you have a soft, if you have like an eight zero soft top <coughs> and your leash is dragging, it's like there it is. So the kook. that's the mall grab. That's one of the mall grabs. All right. So on your head with the leash dragging behind you, <laughs> I've done that a hundred percent. To the sides, acceptable. Um, <laughs> it's acceptable on your hip. That's fine. But to me, isn't it kind of stupid? There's people out there that don't get it. That that they will make fun of or look be mad at you that you're like, oh, why why is that bad? Don't be mean to people. Kids are learning. I mean. I don't think you need to be mean, but dude, I think it's, it's okay to laugh about it. So during COVID, like there is this huge adult learners because everyone had time and no money. During COVID, is that what you said? Yeah. We had like, like Raglan always talks about it, like tons of adult learners. <laughs> so I remember this one guy, He he's like, he bought super expensive boards and he was standing up Mongo. He would stand up with he, his, he stood up with his back foot first. How? You're supposed to push up. And pop up and, and push up. Like, if you're regular, just like on your left. And then he, he would like <laughs> put his leg over and then like, I'm like, dude, you're standing up Mongo. I didn't even know that's possible. And, and he was so mad at me. He's like, oh, my hip hurts. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I have a brain injury. I don't even know where my legs are. My right hip hurts. I was like, just stop staying in Mongo. Because in the end of it, it helps you get up faster. Trying to help you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you think you're a mentor to anybody surfing wise? <laughs> you're like, oh crap. <laughs> no one that I know. <laughs> you're my mentor, Sterling. Like, you know, we talked about it's hard being a surfer here. So Dude, there's not many kids surfing that are like got promise and have the edge. And like, I worked with a couple of interlake kids on the team and it's like, you know, they just didn't want it. Yeah. They don't want it. It's not worth my time. Like if some Grom came up to me from anywhere and like Sterling. Yeah. Train me. Help me. I would totally do it. You just make them run laps. But you got to be ready. Dude. Like we're meditating. We're up at dawn. Dude. We're on, we're stretching. We're, we're doing yoga. sauna. Yeah. It's like, okay. So that you're not just meeting at the beach. You're going to have them live with you. Sauna. <laughs> <laughs> Cooking your hot dogs, <laughs> clean the air fryer. <laughs> What's funny is like, if I was gonna teach someone to surf, yeah, I honestly would put them on a surf skate. Yeah, get them going with their ankles. And I would. It's because you can't really teach someone out in the water. Not it's around too, here. It's too fast and. Yeah. Well, that's what they do at those surf schools. They have like little wave pool with sk surf skates and they're like, all right, turn your hips. Right. Would you ever date a girl with a face tattoo? Like the tattooed eyebrows? We can't talk about girls. We, we got in a little trouble last time. Yeah. <laughs> no, but like, would you date a girl with like, she had like a friggin' rose or lightning bolt or something. Would you date a girl with a face? Your mom would kill you. Oh my God. Your mom hates tattoos. So when I'm around her, I'm always like. <clears throat> my mom. You know, like when you die and go to heaven, yeah. um, Paul's out in front and he checks if your name's in the Lamb's Book of Life. It's Paul? Is it Paul? I don't know. Who lets people in? I think it's just some angel dude. Maybe a girl. Gabriel. Yeah, it's Gabriel. No, I think Paul. <laughs> okay. He said he's taken over. <laughs> he's the gate guy? <laughs> he's the gate guy. He's like, all right, come on. But my mom, she, she, she thinks she's taking that position. For she's, sure. Lydia's going to be the gate guy? She... <laughs> <laughs> Lydia for sure thinks like sh eventually she'll be like checking if people's names are on the list and if checking if they had tattoos. Like, yeah, mm, I don't know. <laughs> so she would, she wouldn't let me in. <laughs> Dude, my mom is so crazy about tattoos. I think 
I don't get it. Like, is it just because it was such an old thing? Well, there's a scripture in the Bible. Yeah, don't mark yourself no, or blah. No, 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 no. It's taken out of context anyways. <laughs> what do you think we'll do in heaven? Like Say we go to heaven, Sterling. What are we going to be doing up there? Podcasting up there? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to podcast in heaven. So, did you see what Paul did? Oh, my God. No, I think we'll be like floating around. Just what if everyone's just slaying? Oh, my God. Here that, we go. <laughs> Maybe. The Muslims are like, we got 16 virgins waiting for us, dude. Everyone just has their own. Virgin. People just make us. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of it's made up. Guess I'll have 61 virgins. <laughs> that sounds nice. But the Catholic Church started doing that on Earth. Oh. Oh. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah. Dude, did you watch the Cat Williams interview? It, I can't watch the whole thing, but I watched his clips. Dude, he's insane. I freaking love that guy, dude. He's so sassy. <laughs> Cat Williams is sassy, man. You know he's been like sent to jail like 17 times or something? I, yeah, for what though? I went and Googled them. They're hilarious. Reasons? They're not that crazy. Well, they're, ab- they're a- sorry. They're absolutely crazy. Like he bit somebody or? Yeah, he bit a girl in a pool. I just made that up. He really did? Are you, you didn't know? <laughs> no, he just looks like a biter. <laughs> yes, he bit a girl in a pool. Shut up. And he knew he was in trouble, so when the cops got there, he was laying in the grass, and he put his hands behind his back, <laughs> like, ready to get taken. No way. Yeah, he bit, like, a, a little girl. Well, when you're, when you're that little and feisty, you have to bite. And then he got into a fight with a teenager, and I get <laughs> He bit him? That one was famous. That kid had, like, beat him up. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Cat Williams is, like... I mean, I feel... Honestly, I have a little Cat Williams in me. Yeah, you can. And I have to be careful. <laughs> Early in my career, I went full Cat Williams. <laughs> That's why I started all the trouble. What does that mean? That's why Laird and Sony Miller were after me. Oh, you mean you stirred up crap. Oh, dude. I, I thought was... you meant you were biting people. <laughs> <laughs> I got a little Cat Williams in me. <laughs> no, I was calling everyone out. Yeah, but that's why people like you, because they want you to call people out. It was fun, but it was too dangerous. I can't live like that. <laughs> no, too much drama, dude. Even just a simple video like the one of Gabriel Medina going, wait, 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 shut. And like, then all of a sudden you're hated forever because well, of that. Well, we're all imperfect beings. Not me. And when you're the person blowing the whistle on everyone, it's well, then it's too stressful. Well, and then they start dragging you down and picking everything about you. Yeah, it's just, it's it causes so much drama and I'm not about that anymore. Right. Like I had enough. Yeah. Like I remember you being nervous. Like I can't go to Hawaii next week (laughs) because I posted this video. (laughs) I remember one time we were bowling. We posted this video. (laughs) I think we can show it now. Right. Mm -hmm. So we were, we were bowling and we posted this video of this girl, like getting all done. Show the clap. Oh my gosh. I got alerted. Oh my gosh. I can't see it here. Hat help. All right. How many comments did I get? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Is that seven comments? Oh my God. Jessica on the beach. Yeah. And so we we're bowling one night and all of a sudden Sterling's sitting down like, and he looked real serious and I was like, why? And he was like, we got to delete the Jessica. <laughs> Cause he was, you're some this Hawaiian guy. He's like, what? That's my wife. <laughs> you're posting video of my wife. What? He's yeah. like, come to the islands. So back then you couldn't do it on your phone. So I think we had to leave the bowling. (laughs) We had to like rush home from the bowling alley and delete it. And what's funny is we deleted it. And then a couple months later, he hits me back. and He's like, actually, we got a divorce. (laughs) Like, F that bitch. (laughs) Put the video back up, yeah. (laughs) And what's funny, I'm I'm friends with him to this day. Like he still messes me. He like loves you now. (laughs) What kind of mood are you in today? Like if I had to pick a color for it. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> purple. You're in a purpley mood? A little royal. Oh, okay. yeah, you do look kind of... A little prima <laughs> air at all. Purple's my least favorite color. You know why? I think Oma used to always wear it. <laughs> <laughs> Oma always had purple on it. I was like, ugh, I don't like purple or something. I like it now because it, it is a ridiculous color. Something about purple. I just makes me <laughs> just nauseous. Just the name. Purple. purple. <laughs> Sounds like pervert or something. Purple. <laughs> I don't like the color purple. And I think when people do wear it, they're like strange people. Yeah. Like jesters. And yeah, they're a little too confident for no reason. Or like an angry queen. <laughs> <laughs> what I didn't like orange really? my whole life. I and love then orange. And I started loving it. My favorite color growing up was baby blue and everyone would make fun of me. 
And now look at you now. Look at me now. I'm here. <laughs> Here's some questions and topics sent in by the fans. Pinchers. Someone asked, did you leave album, the surfboard company? No, they're still my dog pounds. I'm really particular to my boards. I've worked with a lot of shapers. I feel like I'm a twin fin connoisseur. Okay. Like I, it's like I live, breathe, eat twin fins. <laughs> <laughs> Weird. I feel like I just have to make my, I like need to be in, in control of the the way it rides and feels. And I, I learned tons from Christensen and I learned tons from album. Like mm. they all have their own quirks and like feels. And um, my uncle Hank Warner, it's like, he's been shaving for so long and mm -hmm. Hank used to live on the Gulf. Right. So the waves here, they're different. It's like, if you haven't been here, surfed here, right. feel it. That makes sense. And so it's just like, I would try to tell, I've always like try to tell people like how to shape the boards, but they can't really understand it. It's almost like you need to fly them down here. Serious. So when I got um, one of my first boards from Hank, you know, talking with him, it's like, He's like, yeah, you you need this in the Gulf because like it's and like it was like, oh my gosh, you're saying everything Weird. I've been trying to tell people. So you've come full circle. You grew up with Hank as an uncle. <laughs> well, Hank sh shaped the first boards on the Gulf Coast. Okay, like um in the seventies, I can like tell him what I f what I want to feel, mm. and he can digest it and like make it into real life because of life experience he's surfed here he's been, he's been here. shaping he's lived on the golf right so i wanted to just do something on my own that's cool you know? so and what are you doing centaur sleds dude you want to go grab it oh my lanta someone commented on instagram they're yeah. like so you put your entire quiver into one board Oh. And I was like, dude, that is exactly what I tried to do. Dude, shout out to that guy. This is called a double bump swallowtail. Okay. And dude, in, in like crappy waves, it it's like it a do? trampoline. It wow. feels like a trampoline it, because the way it glides off the wave, it it like shoots you forward. I don't get it. So it's like, ugh. It's, it's like moon shoes. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Kelly's moon shoes. So then I'm like, Hank, like, can we put freaking secret channels? So you're saying that little shave down portion of the board this is called a channel that's These a channel channels. and it um so it's a, it's got a concave and it goes through the channel oh. out through the tail so when you're going fast the water's shooting through yes that. it goes <laughs> 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 and it creates another source of finage yes it's it's more control but still you got that looseness so like if i stand more forward on the board the channels don't hit as much so i can like kind of like cruisy cruisums but then when I want to like turn hard, I'll step way back and then it's just like Aah! Weird. So there's a lot of science and thought that went into the, just this. And this is patented. This, Pat patented? We patented this. You patented it. So I call this like a performance trim monster. I love trimming. Trimming is when you like just barely get on the rail and the the rail sets in and you just glide. You know when you're like cutting Christmas wrapping paper and the knife or the yeah. scissors just get going? That's a trim. Dude. This is where his like magic happens. So he, the way he uh, shapes the nose, yeah, he puts this softness. He calls it the power hull, like a boat. Power hull. Yeah. So you know how a boat goes through the water. Yep. It displaces water, yep. so yeah. it can go fat. Cut through it. The way he shaves it on the nose, dude. I can stand on the nose and not pearl dive because the way he shapes it. So that helps, like, when you're up high on the board you can drive through the wave still. Oh. We haven't gotten together and made up a name for it, but I feel like it's <laughs> performance trim riding. Like Ooh. it's a little bit of like all my shortboard days and longboard love. Longboard day. It's I've tried to put everything into like my art and surfing. Like I try not to just be one dimensional between me and hank this is like you know i've been serving for 30 years and he's been shaping for like 60 years yeah. <laughs> with your powers combined so this is like a hundred years of information <laughs> <laughs> 90 but yeah close this is almost a hundred years of us together finally putting it into a board that's cool and what's this what's this model called the full name is the curl bashing speedbird the curl bashing speed <laughs> doesn't roll off the tongue. Vertical moves with accelerated trim. Whoa. 
but I'm just calling it the Speedbird, and this is like the first prototype of it. So where, can people start ordering these? Yeah, they just DM me or um, start at Instagram for the boards, uh, Centaur Sleds, and just freaking DM us. And we're only doing custom orders right now. So be serious. Don't just call. Don't just write if you're bored. Be serious, right? You can kick some tires if you want. <laughs> <laughs> All the boards, we want customs because like sometimes when you just grab a board off the rack, it's like you need to grab what you, the right. size you need. This is like honestly, not just trying to sell this stuff. Yeah. Like this is as core as it gets. Whoa. Like I feel they're, they're glassed and Jojo Roper, who's a freaking legend in San Diego, he glasses them. He's a freaking legend Mavericks Jojo surfer. Roper? Yeah, he's a freaking legend. Like, there's so many legendary hands. Like, my hands touch them. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I want to touch it. Whoa. You know, most of the boards you get, mm -hmm. no one touches them. Just some Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> They're built out of robots. Well, it's just like uh, machines make them all. Right. Like, this is, I'm, I'm telling you, this is as core as it gets. Like, these are collector items. Core alert. We're trying to make you the best board of your life. Oh, dude, that was fun. Good episode. Did you have fun? No. You did. <laughs> All right, guys, please subscribe. Please comment. Please like. I know it's too cool. You guys are too cool for that, but it'll help us. Please. All right, Sterling's going to strip for us. Did you look like one of those rotisserie chickens? Joe Rogan. Thank you for watching Pinch My Salt, the hit podcast of the world's number one surfer, Sterling Spencer. You know the rules. Subscribe and tickle that like button. Pinch My Salt. <laughs>